In this installment, we're going to be going over the Thursday night football matchup between the Baltimore Ravens and Cincinnati Bengals. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef D, and I'm here to give you the winning ingredients for our Thursday night football matchup between AFC North rivals here, the Ravens, going up against the Bengals here. But before we deep dive into that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MetsNetsJetsD. Don't forget about that TikTok at Chef underscore D91. And don't forget about that Patreon. Right now we're at the homepage of the YouTube channel, currently at 8.62 thousand subscribers. This is the road to 10K and we're well on our way because you guys are keep showing up each and every single day. If you're already subscribed, continue to like and comment that helps the YouTube algorithm so we can grow to a much broader audience. All right. Now for that Patreon, if you want to sign up for the Super Bowl futures, it is out and ready already. Uh, go to that link provided down below. Get connected and you'll be able to see and access the Super Bowl futures that I have predicted for Super Bowl 59. All right. I'm so excited to announce I have partnered with BetStamp and SignUp Experts to provide you guys with an easier way to sign up with any sportsbook in your area. If you go to the link in the description down below, you will be directed to this page you see here. It automatically displays all available sportsbooks in your area plus their current promotions. For example, you could take the plays given in this video and apply it to any other sportsbooks you don't currently have and reap the rewards. Now let's get into the slate. For Thursday, we're going to be in M&T Bank Stadium, Baltimore Ravens 63, 6 and 3, Cincinnati Bengals 4 and 5. Looking at the current odds right here, Ravens are home favorites, minus 275 on the money line with the comeback of the Bengals at a plus 220, point spread at 6.5 and total points all the way at 53. All right, so they jumped up that total obviously because the first game they scored around 79 points. Yeah. Yeah, 79 points in that first game, 41 to 38 in that first meeting between the Bengals and the Ravens earlier this season. So they jumped up this total to 53. All right. Uh, public bet percentage here, 89% of the bets, 79% of the money all over the Ravens. For the point spread, 50% of the bets, 55% of the money um, on the side of the Cincinnati Bengals. Sharps are looking more on the side of the Bengals here in this in-division matchup in the AFC North. All right. Total points, 75 percent of the bets, 84 percent of the money towards the over 53. All right. Injury report between these two teams here. Some key injuries to look at. T Higgins. All right. Number two wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals uh, is not most likely will not play in this game. He is doubtful. So that's going to lean uh, upon more of Jamar Chase, Andre Yoshivas, and Mike Gusecki as the one, two, three punch there. Chase Brown has emerged as the number one running back now, and he has a lot of upside and a lot of burst. He can definitely be an X factor in this game. All right. Uh, looking at some other injuries here, we have uh, a Q tag on BJ Hill. He's looking like he's uh, trending towards playing with the limited practice on Wednesday. And then we have a doubtful one, Charlie Jones, who's more of a fourth string wide receiver and special teamer. All right. Baltimore Ravens are dealing with some injuries here. Jalen Amora Davis, their young uh, cornerback, he's most likely not going to play with a knee issue. He's doubtful. Uh, Isaiah Likely, their very talented tight end who emerged earlier this season, he's going to be out. So you're going to see more of Mark Andrews. Uh, and Keaton Mitchell, questionable. Uh, Brent Urban is out yet again with a concussion. All right. One of their DNs. Uh, so between these two teams here, highly contested battle. It was an epic matchup we saw earlier um, in the season, October 6th, 41 to 38. It went into overtime back and forth. Cincinnati had multiple opportunities to come away with that game. They uh, squandered an opportunity when Lamar Jackson fumbled. And they gave that game away in overtime, all right, with the big run by Derrick Henry. But for the most part in that game, they contained Derrick Henry uh, to a very modest uh, game. It was that one 51-yard uh, run he had that really iced things out uh, for the Bengals, all right? Now, between these two teams, 
the issue for the Ravens still has been what they've been giving up to opposing quarterbacks and wide receivers. Ravens, 29th overall against QBs uh, and 20, 20th in the red zone. All right. They're giving up 301 yards passing um, and 1.9 TDs. All right. Remember, in that game earlier this season, Joe Burrow had over almost 400 yards passing, five TDs. All right. Mar Jackson had a, a phenomenal game as well. He had four passing touchdowns. But the real, the big X factor for him was him extending plays with his rushing ability. He ran over over 50 yards rushing, 55, all right, in that game, all right. Opposing running backs, fantasy points allowed to opposing running backs for the Ravens. That has been their strong suit, but more because of what they, how much they give up in the passing. It just becomes an aerial attack, and teams tend to go away from the running game, all right. Uh, but the Bengals... Against opposing running backs, uh, 93 uh, yards a game, 4.1 yards a carry. This stat, what we're looking at here, is the what they struggled against, okay? So, typically been strong against running backs, 7th and 14th, uh, but they have struggled in receiving, all right? So, running back receiving yards have been a struggle, and that's where Chase Brown can be an X factor there. And if you're looking at fantasy points allowed to opposing wide receivers, uh, Ravens are dead last, uh, 32nd overall, 27th uh, rank um, as well in the red zone. All right. They're giving up almost 200 yards clean to opposing wide receivers. We understand that T. Higgins will be out, but Jamar Chase can do it all alone by himself. All right. Um, the Ravens did go out and trade for Tredavious White from the L.A. Rams. But Tredavious White hasn't been himself for a couple years now. And hopefully coming over to this team, he could be more a little bit more motivated. But an old Tredavious White will not be able to contain Jamar Chase. I'm telling you that right now. All right. So the value in this game here, despite the fact that we have majority of the money and we have the Ravens at home. This is an AFC North in division mat, uh, matchup here. And six and a half points is way too many points for a leaky secondary that we have here in the Baltimore Ravens. I can at least believe in the Bengals to contain uh, Derrick Henry to the best of their ability with all their D linemen. Early in their year, they did not have B.J. Hill. All, they, they were missing like three D tackles, all right? They have all their D tackles now that can help contain Derrick Henry here in that run game and really force the issue on the passing game and get Lamar Jackson to make some mistakes, all right? So if you can force the Ravens a little more one-sided, you have a better chance. And I think uh, six and a half points is just way too many here for a, a potent Bengals offense, even without T. Higgins. All right. We're talking about Jamar Chase, uh, Chase Brown, Mike Isecki, Andre Yoshivas. They, they're still capable here of moving the football up and down the field against this very poor secondary here in the Baltimore Ravens. All right. And if they can lean on the run game a little more with explosive Chase Brown, then things can get a little bit uh, uh, tighter here. So I'm going to go with the points here with the Bengals. I think I can trust and rely upon Joe Burrow on the road here in a must-win game. They had so many opportunities um, in that earlier matchup that they're going to be ready for this one here. Give me the points on the six and a half. If you feel more comfortable uh, grabbing the hook at seven, go ahead and go for that number. Uh, this matchup here is going to be a little bit opposite. I don't expect 79 points here. I like the under in this. All right. There's still going to be high scoring. It could be around 46, 47, but the under should hit in this matchup here. I don't expect 79 total points. All right. So our calls are Bengals plus six and a half with an opportunity to win and the under on the 53 in this AFC North battle here. Second time they're facing. All right. This is very similar to what we saw with the Miami and Bills game. All right. The second matchup, a lot of people were all over the Bills. Miami played tough, kept it close and took them all the way to overtime. All right. So that's what we're going to go with here. AFC North matchup play number two here. Bengals keep it close and the under on the 53. All right. So let me know in that comment section down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? We can definitely debate about that. Uh, down below if you guys want to sign up for the patreon remember that is in the description section down below you can access the daily bets future bets and access to that group chat that goes off 24 7 this is your boy chef d i'll be back very soon and peace out